Hello everyone, today in our series of TalkPlexus KOL interviews, we have with us Dr. Samir Umranikar. Dr. Samir Umranikar is a distinguished consultant obstetrician practicing in the UK. He is the recipient of Vinayak J. Shankar Seth Award and is the elected senior council member of British Society for Gynecological Endoscopy. Thank you Dr. Umranikar for talking with us today. Thank you. You are a renowned expert in laparoscopy and hysteroscopy and your area of interest is benign gynecological conditions. Can you please let us know? Why you got particularly interested in treating these conditions? It's uh, benign gynecological conditions are, are a set of conditions where a patient's quality of life gets affected quite significantly. So a lot of women will not come out and they accept, you know, many conditions to be part and parcel of, uh, you know, just the sort of being a woman. Uh, but they do suffer from many conditions like heavy menstrual bleeding, endometriosis, pelvic pain. And I think it's a big subset of patients where I think we can offer and improve their quality of life. So, as you said, the benign conditions, though are not life-threatening, but they do have an impact on the patient's long-term quality of life. So, can you please elaborate what are the most prevalent factors associated with these benign conditions per se, endometriosis? So, the common things that we see in my practice is that we get a lot of patients who have endometriosis. It's, a, it's quite a chronic debilitating condition. And what tends to happen, patients suffer on a monthly basis with lots of pain. They have, um, they have to take time off work. They, have to, they can't look after their children. And if you look at the overall impact, I think it is it basically affects the quality of life. So there are things that we can help to address that. I know it is not oncological, but still I think the quality of life is an important factor for all women. So can you please tell us how general practitioners can diagnose endometriosis and what are the referral conditions? So one of the common problems that we face, and there's a very good study that's been done uh, in Guildford where they've looked at a qualitative study looking at what is the referral patterns and how much time actually it takes for somebody to get um, a referred and get diagnosed with endometriosis. And the average age is about, every time is about seven and a half to eight years. Uh, there have been studies which have shown there are 12 years, the, and the reason being because the diagnostic test for endometriosis is much more invasive, so you have to do keyhole surgery, which is laparoscopy, mm -hmm. to diagnose uh, endometriosis. So there are pathways, and we are addressing that, I think, with awareness, even with the patient population, with women, and also with the medical fraternity. I think once they're more aware of it, I think the diagnosis is getting better. Okay. So like you just said, talked about our research, so what is the external validity of this research? Uh, so you have obviously different types of research. This was, this paper looked at the qualitative uh, aspect of uh, this. So they looked at patients who had endometriosis. They went back and saw what was their pathway to get diagnosis of endometriosis. There are lots of other studies which have looked at sort of, you know, when you look at more of randomized studies, which are slightly different. But I think it gives us an overall view and an overall idea as to there can be delays with women who get diagnosed mm -hmm. with uh, endometriosis. So what diagnostic tests should be performed uh, if there are irregular menses or immediate gynecological consultation which is, is not available? So what kind of diagnostic tests should so be So it undertaken? obviously depends on the age of the woman. So, you know, there are each, in, during the course of, say, a women's reproductive career, mm -hmm. there are going to be different conditions that come through. You've got um, patients with endometriosis mainly fall in the reproductive age group, although we do see more younger patients actually getting diagnosed with endometriosis. Um, you can have a variety of tests that you do. First, history is the most examination, mm -hmm. most important. So your history and examination cannot be replaced by anything else. You need to do that first. Then you can do an ultrasound, although it's not diagnostic. If you've got bilateral ovariances on ultrasound, which are suspected of uh, endometriomas, which are ovariances with endometriosis, then there's a high chance that the patient will have more significant disease. And there's good papers to show the correlation with that. And the gold standard to diagnose endometriosis would be keyhole surgery, which is a laparoscopy, which is the invasive test and maybe one of the reasons why the delay is a bit longer. So now that we have talked about the diagnosis, would you please highlight some common treatment options for endometriosis? Uh, so endometriosis, the basic treatment, first the diagnosis is more surgical, so it's keyhole based, uh, but you can have medical options. As the same way as the endometrium response in the lining of the, where it responds on a cyclical basis, in the same way the endometriosis, which is also made of endometrial gland and stroma, will respond to the hormones. So you can give different forms of medical treatment. But surgery is more definitive where you can make the diagnosis and you can excise the tissue or you can ablate the tissue. 
Sir, in your opinion, how effective is laparoscopy and hysteroscopy for the treatment of endometriosis? So, laparoscopy is the gold standard. Hysteroscopy mm -hmm. is, you don't, um, hysteroscopy, you do not, you can see adenomyosis, or you can treat adenomyosis with a hysteroscopic surgery, but with endometriosis is more treated by a keyhole, which is a laparoscopic surgery, mm -hmm. and that is actually very effective, and there's good evidence to show there are good studies, and there's, uh, to show that there is definite improvement in the pain um, treated with surgery. So, would you please show some light on the indications or even recent advances in these methods? So, recently, obviously, there are with, with laparoscopic surgery, there is much more. So, there's there's uh, you know the number of so with keyhole surgery, the incisions are becoming smaller and smaller, and you can do surgery to uh, a very small incisions up to three millimeters. There are other things that also can be done where you can actually look at the colors and you can look at the abnormal vascularity when you do keyhole surgery. It's useful so you can identify other tissue that is there. And there's a lot of research going on to the etiology and pathogenesis of uh, endometriosis because we still do not know what causes endometriosis. There's a lot of theories behind it. So, but uh, the studies show that it is associated with genetic, environmental and immunological influences. So, do you think that genetic therapy would be the future of treatment of these I benign conditions? I suspect so, because uh, if you look at the uh, family history, if you if the mom suffers from endometriosis, there's a seven times good chance that the daughter or, or her mom's sister might suffer. So, there's a very high chance of familial tendency for that. So, there will be some kind of gene, and I suspect there are genes which are already being looked at. And in the future, with you know, with new gene therapy, I suspect that might be something that might change the way we manage these patients. So you have practice in the United Kingdom and in India as well. So you know a bit. You have a bit of background for the developed and the developing. So would you would you have any suggestions for uh, the yeah. doctors practicing in India? It's quite interesting because when I was practicing in India, it was very difficult. I used to we used to look at medicine and we used to study medicine by looking at textbooks and we used to see textbooks which were written probably 20, 25 years ago. Um, and you know you, you continued following the tradition of medicine. You didn't question many of those I mean, the way the medicine ran and the, the way we practice. But I think by going to the UK, I could certainly see there's a difference because everything is very much evidence based. And textbooks are fine, but they have been they are sort of markers for a very long sort of in the in the in the past. But you always look at the latest evidence, and that's where the you know the new papers and the internet thing is extremely useful. So I can see that there's a big change between you know what you thought traditional medicine to now more evidence-based medicine and I think that's the way for the future and I can see that that is already happening and that's what I would suggest is that you know need to practice um, to show that you know there is evidence. Okay, Dr. Samir according to you can an on online professional community like DocPlexis contribute to the Indian healthcare? I think so I think it's very important because the world's got very small um, there's a lot of exchange of ideas so we can communicate within seconds across different continents and I think it's useful all of us um, are always learning as doctors as medical professionals there are always new things that we come across there are new you know, studies coming up new evidence that comes up and sharing the information is one of the biggest things and I think um, it, you have to be careful that you do not use social networks to use professional work and that sometimes it is important to have this thing across different countries. India is a big country. India is an emerging, um, you know, it's an emerging country. I've seen changes taking place in India over so many years and you can see a lot of more evidence-based practice coming into mm -hmm. India now and I think having this network or having a platform where you can share this different information I think is very good. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable okay. time. Thank, Thank you. you. To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy Doc Flexing!